What is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Pablo Picasso? Most of you probably know that he was a famous painter, and some of you may even be familiar with his work. But have you ever wondered exactly what it is that made Picasso so famous? My name is Jasmine Waldo. I've taken many art classes and I've written essays on several art history movements. Today, I would like to tell you a little bit about Pablo Picasso, his early life, the evolution of his style, and the legacy he left behind. I would like to begin with some background on Picasso's early days. Picasso was born in October of 1881. His father was a naturalistic artist named Jose Luis Blasco. Naturalistic art was a style very popular at this time where artists attempted to be as realistic and as accurate as possible in their paintings. Jose was also an art professor, and because of this, he was able to begin teaching Picasso at the young age of seven how to paint in oil paints. In 1896, Jose convinced the Board of Education at the school he worked for to allow Picasso to take the entrance exam. And because of this, Picasso was admitted into the school at the young age of 13. And at 15, he painted this masterpiece titled The First Communion. This was done in oil paints and in its original form, it was almost four by eight feet. Picasso had become a master of naturalistic art at this point, but as he entered his adult years, his style began to evolve and change. One important thing to note about Picasso's time was that the camera was beginning to gain a lot of popularity and was more readily available. So what took painters hours, days, and sometimes even years could be done with the click of a button by a camera. So artists were left to wonder, how would this change painting? How would they change what painting is? The first visible turn in Picasso's art was called the African period, and this started around 1906. He became inspired by African artists and specifically African masks that simplified features of the human face. You can see this influence in this piece titled Ladies of Avignon. You can see how two-dimensional it is, how flat the colors are, and how there is almost no shading. This painting shocked the world. The two-dimensionality of it and the blank gazes of the naked women offended a lot of viewers that rejected non-naturalistic painting. And from that painting forward, Picasso would continue to focus less on accuracy and more on his own creative expression. That may sound like a simple idea, but at the time it was revolutionary. To put more perspective on just how revolutionary this was, the Nazis had actually banned his art in Germany because they deemed his art to be communist, cosmopolitan, and degenerate art. You can read more about how Picasso's art deviated from the norms at the time in this book called Picasso Challenging the Past. This book is by Elizabeth Cowan. All this controversy would gain Picasso a lot of popularity, and throughout his career, he'd begin to influence a lot of art movements that we can still observe today. He left behind tons of artworks, and he was also in a few short videos, one of which I would like to show you a clip from today. This is Pablo Picasso painting on a piece of glass. He does a quick, simple form that is the image of a little bison. A few of Picasso's most notable legacies is the invention of collage art, which you might be more familiar with, and a style called cubism, which simplifies a subject into very geometrical shapes. You can read more about cubism in Picasso and the invention of cubism. And that book is by Pepe Carmel. He also influenced a few very famous and notable artists, such as Jackson Pollock and Andy Warhol. Thank you for allowing me to tell you a little bit more about Picasso, his early life, the evolution of his style, and his legacy. Now you will have a deeper understanding of what comes with the famous name of Picasso. Are there any questions? Thank you.